Hi, I'm Tamara Lackey, and on this episode of Redefine Show for Adorama TV, I speak with destination wedding and travel photographer Kenny Kim on how he overcame some crippling fears to be able to do the work he felt called to do, the specific steps he took to build his destination business, and one fantastic tip to help you get a ton of referrals. Check it out. Adorama TV presents The Redefined Show with Tamara Lackey. Hi, Kenny. How are you? I'm doing well, Tamara. Thank you for having me. Thank you for coming. You are uh, here at WPPI. How many WPPIs in Las Vegas has this been for you now? This is my 10th year coming and 8th year as a speaker. 8th year as a speaker. Yeah, Excellent. I can't believe it. I was asking you earlier, we were talking about risky things, mm -hmm. and you mentioned that coming to WPPI the first time ever yeah. was one of the riskiest things you've ever done? It was really risky for me because I come from an unorthodox background of how I got into photography. I didn't know what the heck I was doing. I just knew that I love taking pictures. So then um, at a one small convention that was sponsored by Pictage a long time ago, I was invited to come by Skip Cohen. Yes. I think, he, I think he really did out of pity because I told him about <laughs> the situation that I was in. So he gave me a full you know, registration to come to check it out. So I did. And then when I came, I realized I don't know anyone. I don't know anything about photography. And I felt a little nervous, you know? It's like a small fish out of water. Yeah. But ended up being a great experience. And, right. um, and taught me a lot about overcoming my fear, you know, through that experience. You had, you had a lot of fear that you had to overcome with that? I think so. A lot of my, you know, a lot of my decisions are based on fear, you know? And yeah. I feel like you know, a lot of times it was crippling me from the things that I really wanted to do. Yeah. And anytime I did something outside of that, it was, obviously it was scary initially, but then once I walked through it, uh, walked through the fire, I was like, hey, this is awesome. It wasn't that bad. Yeah, you had to like look at it and see yeah. it wasn't as bad as you thought. Yeah, and looking back 10 years, I mean, I don't think I'll be here today if I didn't go to that first WPPI. And you were saying that you didn't know like even technical settings or anything? Nothing. I didn't know what a shutter stop was. I didn't know what a, you know, F, no, F stop or shutter speed <laughs> or ISO, yeah. you know? So yeah. I, and then I would like just kind of like randomly look around to see if anyone else was like feeling the same thing, you know? Yeah, do you guys know what they're talking about? Yeah, so, but, you know. So. But then two years later, you were teaching. Yeah. How did that later. happen? It was just through a lot of like relationship building, networking, and meeting the right people. Oh. And um, I think, you know, just, uh, I don't know. I, sometimes I just kind of shake my head, you know, and wonder if these guys knew what they were talking about when they asked me to, you know, speak, so. Clearly they have. This is your eighth year <laughs> speaking here at the conference. So um, how did you decide to build uh, basically a destination wedding business? Mm -hmm. You're based in Chicago. Yeah. So going back to the unorthodox approach, yeah. I didn't know that I was starting a destination wedding business. My uh, photography career actually began in, um, in a college campus. I went to school at the University of Illinois. Okay. And I graduated uh, with a graphic design degree background. And I decided that, you know, I'm going to work. And you know what? I'm going to stay on campus because, you know, I had a really good job offer right away. Okay. So as I was working, I had a lot of free time, so I decided to pick up photography as a hobby. The main reason why I actually picked it up was because I wanted to get better seats at sporting events. <laughs> I noticed all the photographers, you know, the press photographers yes, sitting. Yes, yes, yes. So I'm like, I want to be there. Yeah. So that I was my get motivation. One of those devices that get me there. Exactly. That was my motivation to get started in photography. Yeah. I was also attending a church that had a lot, large number of audience and members. Um, so a lot of times I would get invited to these weddings during the wedding season, and I would go. And you know, living on college campus budget, I really wasn't making a lot of money to be giving gifts all the time on a weekend basis. Yes. So I came up with a clever idea. You know what? I bet if I take some pictures and give it to them as a gift, they'll love it. You know, yeah. Hope, well, at least hopefully. And it turned out it worked. You know, it worked out for me because they loved. Not only did they love the photos, they were telling me that my photos were better than the photographers that they hired. Oh, nice. So that sparked a little. I mean, not nice for that other photographer, but exactly. nice for you. Yeah. So that kind of gave me a little idea that oh, maybe I can do this for full time. You know. Yeah. And the funny thing about you know living in a college campus is that uh, the church that I was going to had all these members. They were from out of town or a different country because they were there for school. So once they graduated, they would go back to wherever the job took them or you know from where they're originally from. And the next phase in life, they will get married. Uh, so then they remember that I was a photographer, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah. So they you didn't, kept yeah. that relationship. Yeah. Exactly. So then, you know, they started asking me to come out to shoot at these uh, destination locations. So I did it, you know, not knowing exactly what I was getting into. Right. And, yeah, next thing you know, I was becoming a destination wedding so photographer. So you kind of almost, like, stumbled into it just by building these relationships. Exactly, yeah. yeah. And you know how it is when you go to weddings, you get referrals from guests. Yes. You know, people found out that I came from Chicago to shoot a wedding, you know, in, in the destination location. Yes. So the rumors started going around like, man, this guy must be really good. <laughs> <laughs> so little did they know. The perception like, kind of yeah. helped it. Yeah, perception, yeah. yeah. So fake it till you make it kind of a principle. Yeah. So, it's yeah. amazing how often that holds mm -hmm. out to be true. It is, yeah. 
And you and you seems like you predominantly shoot in places like Italy, Hawaii, mm -hmm. Napa. Is that that accurate? Exactly. Yeah. So I mean, the world is your oyster. So you can pretty much go wherever you want. But at the same time, if you do that, I think you're going to find yourself burning out. You know, and not every place in the world is really meant for you. So I, I would encourage all the photographers that are thinking about going to places, just pick a few places that you know calls you out. Like if you're flipping through a travel channel or looking through a magazine, and you look at the image, and you're like. Gosh, I wish I could be there, you know? And, yeah. and those are the places you want to focus on. Right. And ironically for me, it ended up being Napa, Hawaii, and Italy. Yeah. So. And you now lead photo tours there as well, outside exactly. of the wedding shoots. Yeah. How, how did that come about? So about seven years ago, back in 2009, uh, I met a friend named Max Bernelli, okay. uh, who lives in Italy. And <laughs> it was kind of strange, but he reached out to me via Facebook message. And, you know, he introduced himself and he said, hey, Kenny, you know, I was like, I'm, I'm from Italy, my name is Max. I do these tours, I'd love to show you Italy. So again, you know, red flag goes up. I was a little scared. I was like, what's this guy reaching out to me for? Is this something like a scam? Just wire me your money. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, but again, I took his offer and I went to Italy and I spent about a week with him. Huh? And he drove me around and showed me all these places in Italy and my mouth just dropped. I couldn't believe the things that I was seeing. Yeah. Now I had been to Italy before on a tour group, you know, going to all the major tourist cities like Rome, Venice, you know, and Florence and things like that. But it just didn't really click with me. But when you were showing me all these beautiful places, you know, through a local's eye, somehow like it rekindled a passion in me to be almost want to be a better photographer. Mm. And and the, the same experience and the joy I felt, I was like, you know what? I can never replace that again because I've already seen these places. But I want to, you know, make this experience possible for other people as well. And that's how uh, him and I, we started collaborating and working on these photography tours together. So that's been, what, 2009? So, and you know, I do it usually once or twice a year. That's interesting because so you kind of fell into it by giving away images, sure. building these relationships, they brought you out, mm -hmm. you started building these businesses in these destinations and you sure. shared that on social media mm -hmm. and then someone reached out to you and said, I love the work you're doing in this area, right. let's try this different tact. Right, right. Yeah. Because Max had already worked with another photographer that we're both friends with, uh, Kevin Kubota. Oh yeah. Yeah, and so then, you know, and I think through that connection, Max saw the images, you know, and he noticed that I was everywhere, you yeah. know? So he thought, okay, this guy likes to travel, so maybe right. he, he would do something like that with me, so. So how, uh, how much of the year are you traveling? You know, before I got married, I used to travel quite a bit. I was almost gone like three-fourths of the year. Yeah. And I was home only about maybe two months. I would say still like about two weeks out of the month, I'm, I'm gone somewhere. Okay. Who uh, photographed your wedding? Um, this guy named Mike Cologne. I don't know if you guys know him right now. I so, know Mike. <laughs> yeah. He actually made the process really easy. I didn't know who to ask, mm -hmm. but I just wanted to invite Mike as a friend to come to the wedding. Yes. And he just offered to shoot it. So I was Wonderful. like, Wonderful. All right. Done. 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 Yeah, exactly. Perfect. So, which is ironic for me because he was one of the photographers that helped me out, you know, quite a bit in the beginning. Yeah. And he was my inspiration. So to have that guy photograph the wedding for me, it was like a dream come true. Yeah. So, that's amazing. Yeah. Um, when you kind of look back at that progression, mm -hmm. um, is there anything that you're like, ah, if I could have done it again, I would have skipped this part? Uh, in my photography career? Yeah. Ooh, that's a good question. I would say, like, I probably would invest more in education. Uh, I, you know, I felt like, you know, it's, a lot of times I kind of skipped out an opportunity because I was at all these events, but then I didn't really pay attention to the education part of it, you know? And I felt like there's so much wealth of knowledge I could have probably learned more. While you were there. While I was yeah. there, yeah. But I think I was just more focused on the building the network relationship, you know, and yeah. building, you know, friendships. Which is important too, but yeah, you know, at the same time, yeah. I think education is something that we're all missing these days. You know, I talked to a lot of the young beginning photographers and you know, they don't know the, all the technical details and right. things like that about the camera. So you know, that's something I probably wish I would learn more. I think the first few years I was so focused on like just getting a lot of work done mm -hmm. and trying to keep up with the pace yeah. and, and trying to fix things. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. versus just put on the brakes and just say, let me let me learn this top to bottom. Sure. And doing that, you have such such a significantly higher level of confidence, mm -hmm. you know, in, in your work and it, and it shows. And there's more education now available than ever before. There's so much, isn't it's it? It's incredible. Yeah. Through online, it's made like you can get it anywhere you want, practically. Yeah. So what's next for you? What would you think would be like the next dream activity that you do? Not that you know, you're not already doing most people's dream activity. Gosh, you know what? I love what I do right now and I can't see myself doing anything else. So, you know, I'm, I'm hoping to stay healthy. That's one of my goals this year. Yeah. Um, I want to get back into shape. Just seeing my schedule this year and, and the number of weddings I have to photograph. Yes. I'm like, you know what? I need to get back into shape. And yeah. that's like my next goal right now. That is your goal right yeah, there. That is yeah. my goal. <laughs> That's a huge impact. Yeah. Because because weddings are so physically arduous. It is, yeah. Yeah. You add that with the travels that you have to do right. and the times that you have to adjust to. 
Yep. It makes it physically, uh, you know, it takes a toll on you. And I don't recommend it for everyone. Yeah. No, I, I photographed weddings for seven years. Mm -hmm. um, I stopped doing them a while ago. Mm -hmm. But um, I brought my husband out. My husband, who's competed in Ironman competitions oh, and wow. major triathlons. Yeah. Um, and the first, like, one, two weddings he photographed with me, he would come back, put his feet up on the couch and just yeah. be like, that was so much harder. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that was so hard. And yeah. I'm like, you're a super fit triathlon. He was like, yeah, but you're always, you're not just here. You have to yeah. always be here. Right, right. It's mental and physical. Yes. So usually when I come home after shooting a wedding, I am like physically wiped out and mentally I just shut down. Yeah. You know, I'm like a robot. I plug myself into the wall and I just kind of <laughs> relax for a while. You know, so. Right. Yeah. Do you also find that it's hard to go right to sleep when you, even if it's late, you kind of still stay up just to. Oh yeah, because I'm so excited about all the images I captured. Yeah. So, you know, my job is not done when I'm done shooting a wedding. Right. I come home, I download everything. And then another thing I do that's kind of unique is, you know, I try to provide sneak peeks for my clients. So I'm right going away? to, yeah, right away. You know, because the first image that they see is the image that they're going to remember their wedding by. And yeah. I don't want that to be like, like an iPhone photo that a random guest took. That's a great point. So as soon I as I that. go home, I pick out my fi uh, favorite 15 to 20 images, make it look nice, and I send it to them. Yeah. And then I go to sleep. And Even next, at 2 in the morning. Yeah, it do doesn't that. matter. Yeah. yeah. Because when they wake up, they're going to see these images. And guess what? They put them straight to social media. Yeah. And, you know, and it's free advertising for me. They love it because they look great. The exuberance is still yeah. so high. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. So you got to strike while the iron is hot. Yeah, that's great advice. So, and, that's been, and that's what's helped me get a lot of referrals, you know, wedding after weddings, right. by following methods like that. Well, where can people go to learn more about you? Oh, you can go to KennyKim.com, but that's just my website, which is just actually a new one launched today. Ooh, congratulations. Thank you, thank you. Or, but most of the times you'll find me on social media. So you'll either find me on Instagram yes. at Kenny underscore Kim or just Kenny Kim Photography at, on Facebook. Perfect. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Samara. Thank you so much, Kenny, for that. Check us out here next time on Adorama TV. And do not forget to subscribe to Adorama TV for just like oceans of content.